Hi, I'm Ali Patterson. On this episode of Fintech Finance, we speak to SmartStream to talk about some of the issues with MIFID 2. We also catch up with BNLB in Munich. And over in France, we catch up with BNP Paribas. So firstly, we speak with SmartStream about MIFID 2. Why would it still be a good idea, a positive thing to adhere to MIFID 2? What are the advantages of adhering to it, irrelevant to fines and fees? So I, I, I think it's about the transparency in the whole process. Uh, and I think it's important to have that transparency for both from, from a bank internal standpoint, but again, providing that transparency back to their customers. So I think transparency is the key sort of uh, idea behind the whole regulation. Over in France, Lea Jacobiak speaks with BNP Paribas about how they're handling some of the issues associated with this regulation. And because all of this is currently booming, regulation is obviously catching up with the likes of Mythid 2 being introduced. What are your thoughts on that and the, the transparency in general, this move towards more transparency? I think this is not only regulation, but I think this is also um, the really um, requested by the customer because uh, as, as a customer, when we got used to use a lot of digital services, um, we are used to have a, a lot of transparency, not only on the price, but also on the process. We know exactly where our order is and what is going to come next. So I think that this uh, request for uh, the urgent need for transparency is absolutely a must. And this is something that uh, we, we are working on very actively uh, as a bank. I was curious about the effect that this regulation will have on the industry. So I spoke to SmartStream to find out more. Uh, so I think some of the changes are regulatory driven. So if you look at MIFID 2 now, uh, one of the major pieces of work that is going on is around the unbundling of fees. Uh, so the breakdown between execution and research costs. Uh, so that's one of the key drivers in terms of how the commissions are calculated now. Uh, so they need, the regulators need transparency into of what research is used and how they're charging for the research and things like that. So that's one key driver. Uh, again, uh, regulators in Europe have also kind of you know, driven from a brokerage, the inter-dealer side of things, where OTFs are now required or MTFs are required to publish their aid cards. Uh, and they're trying to standardize those fee schedules uh, with, with different banks and between inter-dealers and dealers. So, so there's some of the key drivers who basically, you know, how, our, how we operate within the industry kind of changes for us. Uh, you mentioned regulation there briefly. Obviously, a very hot topic, uh, not just here, but for all financial institutions at the moment because of MIFID 2, GDPR, PSD 2. What are your thoughts? Well, actually, I think uh, regulation is, is needed because yes. otherwise it will be the wild, uh, wild west. Um, I mean, I think clearly it'd be nice if, if regulators collaborated even more and uh, that, that, you know, there was not 5,000 pages of MIFID legislation and so yes. forth. Uh, but all in all, I think it's actually creating a more level playing field. Yes. It's also allowing much more transparency. Yes. Uh, so it allows competition. And I think now that, that consumers can own their own data and they can really be, uh, it, it supports open banking. Mm -hmm. And I think open banking is really uh, an ecosystem where you can have a legal approach to building up a client experience, but also your entire value chain. And I think that's going to be uh, benefiting consumers big time. So all in all, I think these regulatory changes, albeit they, they you know, are not always making things easier in the short term, yes. will create a much more uh, level playing field which I think is super important for, for consumers and for the industry to, to thrive and develop under, under you know, a, a set of governance rules that, that really supports the best practice and so forth. The regulatory pressure the banks see, which um, has again an impact of course of the costs uh, uh, they, they have to generate, which is not necessarily according uh, to their understanding of course uh, contributing very much to the margins, uh, obviously, they can generate. And um, a big, big topic uh, uh, is uh, mitigating risks. So getting control uh, of, uh, over the risks, actually, uh, and make sure they stay in business. In terms of the risk side of things, what does SmartStream really offer to help banks really mitigate that risk? Uh, generally, SmartStream offers uh, solution and services uh, which uh, uh, automate uh, processes end-to-end, uh, -end, uh, preferably, of course, uh, within the, uh, our client base. And uh, by automating uh, processes, uh, you actually 
decrease the risk that uh, the biggest risk you have in the bank. Uh, those are human beings, correct? Yeah. Uh, humans make mistake, correct? Uh, so what we do is actually we make sure we provide uh, the uh, the support actually in terms of uh, solutions and services to make sure that uh, people who have to make decisions at the end of the day have co uh, correct and uh, complete data available for their decisions. And secondly, uh, we try to automate process and get actually rid of uh, manual human interactions as far as we can. And uh, this obviously reduces uh, risks uh, uh, very much, correct? We also help uh, by doing that because we do this end-to-end, -end, so it's not only back office obviously, correct? Uh, we, we start uh, partly at least even in the front office, uh, definitely going through the middle office too. So this means what we try is actually we try to prevent uh, uh, potential problems already very early uh, in the process. Yeah. So at the initiation of uh, whatever transaction uh, the process afterwards. I went over to Munich to catch up with Bay and LB. What are you guys doing really from a regulatory standpoint when it comes to MIFID 2? Well, first of all, we have to fulfill them, otherwise we wouldn't be allowed uh, to do um, any business. Um, and then what one also has to say, obviously, um, this is not some sort of fun factor, yeah, that this is pretty hard work. And, and just when thinking um, about all the things that we have to produce, um, to, to give certain product information to our clients, um, to uh, tell the, the authorities what we're trading even before the trade and then after the trade. So this is just a huge amount of data that we also have to process here. Um, and therefore, um, that there's no need, no, no really, that there's no real growth opportunity for us as a bank apart from what I said before, to share these experiences with other banks or to make ourselves maybe here and there a bit more efficient. Um, but on, on the bottom line, of course, MIFID 2 will increase our also running cost base, which of course is a negative. But once again, as I said before, um, this is a regulatory duty. We have to comply with this. Of course, we want to, as a good corporate citizen, we want to comply with this, and we will as of 3rd of January. How does regulation play a part in all this? Because, of course, the, from a regulatory standpoint, you need to show that you've got cash on hand, you need to obviously comply with MIFID, etc. How do you kind of sort of really fit into that? And what effect does that have on the bank's bottom line? Uh, I mean, there's, uh, there's obviously an effect which the banks uh, don't like uh, so much, correct? It uh, generates a lot of costs on their side to implement all of that. And it also reduces, of course, uh, the, uh, the investments in things they would like to do to increase maybe their revenues, correct, to increase the margins. On the other side, I think there is um, there's at least a certain understanding uh, that uh, it is obviously needed because what we've seen from the past, the past, uh, we learned from the past that uh, uh, it's, uh, it's obviously uh, better that somebody else tells the community to have, uh, you know, to be risk, um, uh, to, to mitigate risk, to control the risk, and to be aware of the risk uh, to take, correct? Right? Definitely, there's an impact uh, on the cost side. Uh, it is impacting uh, generally also, since it is impacting other projects and initiatives in, in the banks, you would uh, normally believe, of course, that maybe there's less money. Uh, for projects which increase efficiencies or, or reduce costs, but uh, fact is it goes hand in hand. Correct? If you comply uh, with the regulatory requirements uh, with somebody like us, who actually cover both actually, by, by implementing uh, our solutions or using our services, you get automatically not only what the regulator wants, you automatically increase uh, your risk control and you decrease your, co uh, your costs too, correct? Right? Because it's everything here is interlinked. Automation with uh, 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 what has to be reported to the regulators is coming with in one solution or in one service. Then. On the next episode, we look at security.